All right, so we just saw Detective Pikachu, so Kirby, let me practice. Day Pika. Bye. Fuck it. Welcome back, friends. Last Scarf here, and I just finished watching Detective Pikachu. We're going to talk about a bunch of things. Okay, so channel things real quick. Uh, this weekend, going to be at a birthday party from 1 to 10, so we're not going to do a special stream on Saturday. Uh, I've got a bunch of indies I want to work on. Also, Kirby, newest podcast episode comes out on Saturday as well. That's the... Well, I record this on Friday now. These come out on Saturdays. So, same day. Kirby Podcast. Check it out. Episode 17. People have been asking for it, which means we're starting to get a little more popular, which is always great. Always great. Uh, let's see here. So, I'm going to do some indies. Since we're recording Friday, I'm going to do some indies. We're going to do Tales of the Neon Sea, Swag and Sorcery, and... Brushing my teeth. What is it called again? Steam World Quest. Okay, so Tales of the Neon Sea looks interesting, so I can't wait to try that one out. Uh, Steam World Quest is from Steam World Dig, Steam World Heist. I love these games, so I can't wait to play that. I'm really excited. We got uh, we got one for the Switch, so I'm gonna be playing on the Switch. That'd be cool. I got Swag and Sorcery, which sounds a lot like something I want to play. It's from Tiny Build, which I'm a big fan of Tiny Build. They've had great games. And Swag and Sorcery is like you manage your town and you send out adventurers and stuff like that. It sounds to me quite a bit like my life as a, as a king, which was a game I really loved from Square Enix. So if it's anything like even half that, I'm excited because I like managing heroes, send them out to do things, they go do things. And then if, they, if it's anything like that, I am hype because I like that concept. I like that concept in other games like Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. That was a concept there where you could send people out to do some quests while you did your own quest, and then they'd come back, and I like the kind of things where you're managing a team. That is something I really like. Like, you know, we've played Dominic quite a bit. I like that management aspect of Gladiators, and that's just something I like. Is I like Gladiator games because there's usually management of stats and what a Gladiator can do and things like that, and Dominic has a lot of what I like with that. My favorite is Shadow of Rome. I've said it before. That's a really, really good Gladiator game. Uh, so that's channel stuff. Oh, Sekiro, I'm gonna finish recording that, uh, this week, because Rage 2 is coming out on the 16th, so we'll be covering Rage 2, we'll be streaming the LP of it, and then also Professor Layton's nearly done as well. There's probably maybe another five, six, eight episodes, because just, we 100% the puzzles, because that's how we roll. And then after that, we're gonna do Chrono Trigger. And so, I'm debating... I'm considering maybe we do maybe a stream discussion or a video where it's like, hey, we're going to do Chrono Trigger. So those of you who are fans of the voice LPs, what voices do you think should go where out of the ones that I have? And then we also see what voices I should try to do. Like, there's got to be some new voices. I sh Every LP we do, there's some new voice comes out of it, which is important because you should be developing. And so very interested to see what might come out of that. And because Chrono Trigger is Chrono Trigger, it's such an important game. Really can't wait to do that. Oh, God. We might do FF7 when the remake comes out, which would be so weird. I assume FF7 remake is going to be fully voiced. But, like, we can do the original, obviously. Um, Yeah, and then it's going to be... We have the debate on the Layton, uh, on Layton games and on the Phoenix Wright games, because the next Phoenix Wright games are the Edgeworth games, and then the next Layton game is a phone game. So we have the debate whether we do these games that are kind of weird... That aren't exactly mainline before we get to the the crossover. Because the crossover is, I think, the seventh game for each. So that's something to keep to consider is do we just do all these random things to get to the crossover? And then we go from there. We'll see, I guess. Uh other things I need to start working on Kirby's Pinball. That is the next game from the Kirby series. And it should be a shorter work on, but it should be a lot of fun and things like that. Magic the Gathering Arena has been out for like two weeks and I haven't put any videos out. I've been recording videos, but I haven't put any videos out because I just haven't made enough. I've made some pretty bad decks that weren't worth showing. I made some good decks that were showing. I need to make more. They still haven't put out drafting yet. There's traditional draft, but I want to do the one, the single round draft because traditional draft has too much pressure on it and it's just more expensive. The cheaper one round draft is just, well, it's cheaper, so it's not as bad to do. So I'm waiting for those to show up so that we can learn some more drafting, because the better, the best way to learn is through practice. And the best way to practice is the cheaper alternative, not the more expensive one. Um, other things channel... I don't know. Uh, I think it's everything channel. 
And it's everything. Oh, right. Total War Three Kingdoms is coming. We'll be playing that too. And I've been saying it for months. At some point, we got to play Shadow War. But I'm too... I've been addicted to Apex. We're at almost 140 hours of Apex. I really... I've been playing Apex a lot. And I'm sure it's getting stale for some people. I still enjoy it a lot. I really do. I just, I've just gotten better at the game. I've just... It's when you like a game, you get better at it. It feels good. I'm getting better at it. I'm just dropping people. It's great. I just really enjoy it. And I want to get the full uh, battle pass going. And then we'll see. Apparently, E3 is where they're going to announce the second battle pass. Smash Brothers is still going. We're almost there. We got like maybe 14 more challenges. And we've 100%ed the challenges. They're just getting the rest of the spirits. And then we're done. And then it's just waiting for the DLC on occasion. And then we'll talk. We'll play some DLC on occasion. Like, that's what's going to happen there. Uh, gonna try to do indies again. Oh god, how is this something? I'm mentioning this later. I I am fully certified as a water plant operator now. Scarf is fully certified as a water plant operator. That means uh the lives of millions of people was on my shoulders now. <laughs> but besides that, uh I just get paid more. And because of that, I can't wait to do giveaways again. Like because I have a job, I was paying off student loans, which was taking some money. Well, we still had money to buy more important things. But with that, I should have enough money to do actual giveaways, and I can't wait to do it. I can't wait to do giveaways. Like, if we get an indie game that's like $10, and I love it, I'll buy like 10 and just give that away. Like, that'll be fun. Like, maybe I can see if I can get a deal with the developer. I don't know. Be like, how can I buy 10 from you guys? Like, can I buy 10 keys? And have like a relationship with them. And eventually, I'll know my schedule and everything. And, like, Comic-Con's going to be the big thing that takes up some time in July. But after that, once we hit August, my schedule is going to finally be set. And we'll know exactly what we can do. And I can finally just line up doing more interviews for basically a podcast again. And things like that. I can't wait for that for sure. Hmm, what else is there before I just talk about topics? Oh, Detective Pikachu. So Detective Pikachu, not a bad movie. It's it's a good movie. It's a very entertaining movie. There's plot holes all over the place. There's there is some gaps in logic here and there. It's a video game movie, so you don't expect the best writing, but it's still pretty entertaining. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. I recommend it. Check it out. Oh, I got Pokemon cards. Where are they? They're in the car. Ah, so... Some theaters are giving out Pokemon cards, and I got some, so that's cool, but they're in the car. I don't have it on me. Whoops. Um, I enjoyed it. It was very entertaining. Uh, just a lot. I don't... Did any Pokemon look at... Some Pokemon just kind of looked kind of weird, but the majority looked really good. They looked very... They just looked like they existed, which is awesome. That's pretty good. Uh, I probably talked about Endgame last time. Right? Endgame's great. I'm going to see Endgame again next Friday, by the way. I can't wait for that. I, I think there's nothing else to talk about because of the topic. So the topic I gotta talk about is gotta be... Let me click over here. There's kind of two things. Maybe just one, but kind of... Oh, no, no. Let me talk about this first. If you're a fan of The Watchmen, oh my god, the letter from Damon uh, Lindelf... Lindelford? Lind Lindelhold? L -l 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 the guy who directed Prometheus or whatever? Let me find... His name's Damon something. I Jinx could put on the screen the correct spelling of his name. That was an interesting read, a very interesting read. Having being someone who's read Watchmen and who enjoyed Watchmen, this letter was a very interesting read. And it is the way I put it is, this is a long letter you write to your ex girlfriend to get her back. That's really what it is, and it worked. I'm like, hmm, yeah, I'll take you back, honey. Like the way the way I see it is, they're making a Watchmen show. And this letter is to con is just telling you that, well, what he's feeling, what he's thinking, just a lot of background to why he's doing it and everything, how much of a fan he is and everything, and just gives you his side of things. And through that, it's like, okay, I understand your, your, what you're thinking and uh, your side of things. You've convinced me that I want to check it out. Because I saw Watchmen's coming, I have no interest in this. I have zero interest in it. The original 12 was great. There's going to be some sort of adaptation or whatever, and I don't really care. And then he writes this letter, I'm like, okay, I'm interested now. I'm at least willing to check it out. Because before, I'm like, eh, I don't care. But now I'm interested. I will see. Uh, I saw that it was coming because I think it's on HBO. And so I'm watching Game of Thrones on HBO Go. Finally able to not pirate it. Able to actually pay for it. So watching it. And two more episodes of Game of Thrones. Oh my god. Oh my god. So the main topic I want to talk about. Which feeds into another thing. And we'll see where it goes. Today, 
hey, you may have heard of a man named Ben Shapiro. Um, he has millions of subs. He has tons of followers. He makes a lot of money being this guy on the right who just, uh, he's, his whole thing is like, he's great at arguing and he destroys people and he's, he's, as he was put in those, the New York Times, New York Post, was it a couple of years back where he's, he's the hip young guy who's getting the young conservatives energized and stuff like that. He's that guy. And he just has a ton of followers. And he has an extremely popular podcast, one of the top listened ones of, uh, out there right now. I'm like, this guy's got a lot of pull. I didn't notice because I've just ignored this guy. But apparently he's got just a ton of people. Like, damn, he really does. And that's, it's scary because what was interesting was today he got interviewed by, I forgot his name, which is awful, but I don't watch the BBC. So a dude at the BBC starts grilling him in an interview, and he's grilling him, and he's grilling him good, and Ben Shapiro just angrily cuts short the interview, even calls the dude to interview him with leftists and all that stuff, and just gets mad and storms off. The man he was yelling about being a leftist and all this stuff is a right-wing man, a man who owns a newspaper of the right-wing variety. That's bad. He crumbled. The The master of debates crumbled when he was actually given actual interview questions because the BBC is very different from the US. Like, we're, we're very fluffy here. Journalism is not the best, and we all know it. It's very frustrating. And he got challenged, and we got to see what happens when a man's challenged. And this is... the It's not about Ben Shapiro. It's about people in general. And that is, honestly, no matter how con much conviction we have, when we're challenged... We're actually really bad at, at dealing with that. And Ben Shapiro showed that right there for all to see. You can be adamant about a topic, but if you're not willing to debate the topic, like actually debate it, actually go against points that are valid against yours so you can validly fight back, and then actually have a conversation, you just crumble, and you just do insults, you get angry or whatever, and then it's over. And this is very common. We see this all the time. You'll see this with parents a lot. You'll see this with kids a lot. You'll see this with a lot of people in general, where people will have this thing that they're very adamant about, and then they're challenged, and they don't have an answer for it, and then they just get angry. We see it a lot. And there's just different groups for different things for this. For Ben Shapiro, it's the left. Anyone who's giving him crap and he doesn't like it, they're the left. Or they're just nobodies, because he's many times said, who are you? I'm somebody. You're not anybody. He's used that argument, which is very unfortunate. That's not a great argument. It's a terrible one to use on anyone, because it doesn't say anything. It just says, well, people have heard of me, and that means my word means more than yours. Not so great. But we've seen this with just many different examples in groups. You can have it be, let's just go with that with dudes. Uh, if they're arguing with a woman and she's just giving him valid points and he's just not able to argue back, she's a feminazi. Or just, in general, she's just a feminazi to him. That argument comes up. Or it becomes a race thing, or it becomes anti-LGBT, or even for the LGBT people, the argument of some cis white man. Their opinion means nothing. We've seen this quite a few times. I've seen it many times on Twitter. I follow a lot of LGBT. I follow a lot of people in general. And I see it. I see this hatefulness towards cis white men, or just cis men in general. And I was like, woof, all right, okay. Attacking potential allies, all right, sometimes it's valid, sometimes it's not. And it's not great when your go-to thing is like, oh, you're just this, oh, you're just that, oh, they're just these things, I don't have to... It's a defense mechanism. You understand it's a defense mechanism. When we're dealing with trolls... You, you want to believe in your mind the troll is a neckbeard. Your troll lives in a basement. The troll is just all these negative things. That they're just these shitty people. And they're just below you. You want to believe this person who's antagonizing you is below you. That's always how it is. That is a defense mechanism. And it's very unfortunate. And why I bring it up is just the recognizing that. Recognizing that. That many of us are guilty of this. Because as far as I can tell, we all do it. But the reason for it is as a defense mechanism. And I bring it up because I think we can just be better about it. And one of the best ways to be better about it is actually copying to when you're just not great on your topic. It's like, if you're getting challenged, you're like, well, I don't have that. And I wish we admitted more when we don't have an answer so that we can do the research on it. On a lesser scale, not as important, back in the day when we did Smite, 
when I got challenged, uh, I would, it would, it depended on the person. It really did. Whether I'd go, I don't really care about this argument. I just move on. Or if it really was a question like, okay, yeah, I don't have the answer to that. I was like, and then like, okay, well you got me, hold on. And then I'll do the research on it. And like, okay, yeah, either they're right or I'm right. Or there's some gray area. Cause being challenged should be prompting you to research, not just to dismiss. It should be prompting you to research to either strengthen your understanding, which will help you win, or maybe you'll lose, but at least you understand it better so that you can come up with a counter if it's an argument about something, or you just know what the answer is and it improves your knowledge. That's what it should be. That's what a debate is supposed to be. It's not just winning an argument. It is strengthening understanding. And that is probably where we failed as people in like the last couple decades is it's been more about winning than for than it's been about understanding. And that's probably a big problem with our divide, especially in America, where it's just about winning between the left and the right, not about bettering things between the left and the right together. And that's very unfortunate. And so what I'm really arguing for is just being better minded, just being better about figuring things out and also being better about your ego and yourself that you're okay to take the pop of, well, I didn't know it, so that I know it next time to block it, so that I know an answer for next time. Because the truth of the matter is, and this is something more centered that I just thought of, is that a big part of life is being wrong and losing and defeat and all that stuff, and being able to cope with that, and being able to handle that, and being able to move on from that and get better from it. And I've seen it so many times in there, and I've seen it so much with my, in myself. The fear of losing, the fear of the embarrassment of losing, the fear of the hit to the ego from losing. Just running away from the thing you don't want because you don't want to lose or whatever thing. I see it very often. I've done it many times in my life as well. And that's something that we could do better on in general. Because you're not going to win every single game. You're not going to do that every single time. Think about the Avengers. What was the most the most hard-hitting thing. That was Infinity War, and that's where the heroes lost. Because it reminds you that, what are the stakes if they lose? They lost, and bajillions of people were dead. That is the stakes. It reminds you of just how important it is for them to win every time. It also shows that you can't win every time. And they make a comeback in the end game. In life, because we're not fictional stories... We are going to lose a lot, because you don't learn without loss. The truth of the matter is, which I've said many times over vlogs over the years, is we don't learn from winning, we learn from losing. We lose, okay, what can I do better next time? We lose again, what can I do better next time? That was my mantra, that was what I did when it came to Smite. That's what I try to do with anything when I want, when I get into a game a lot, is here's where we effed up, let's not make that F up again. And if we make it again, then I'm starting to get annoyed, because we should have learned that last time. And we do it a bunch of times, I get really annoyed. And that's kind of what happened with Smite is we kept making the same mistakes over and over again. The, th the thing of the matter is, though, which I did not understand, which I should have understood is um, I'm playing with people, new people, every single game. And they're making the same dumb mistake. Because the fact of the matter is they're not the same person and people I'm playing with every time. And they're not going to be as good as whatever other people have been playing this game. And so they're gonna they're gonna lose. They're gonna take pops. They're gonna make bad mistakes. And that's why I made guys so people would make less bad mistakes. But not everyone's gonna see my guides. Not not everyone's gonna even if they see the guides gonna be that great anyway. And skill you get over time. You have a ta there's also talent which you get. You just naturally can be good at things. But then there's skill which you get over time. And who knows how many times you've been playing? Even somebody who's played something a hundred times or a hundred hours might still be bad at something. Sometimes people are just bad at games. And that's something to accept as well. Is sometimes people are just bad at something and they love it though. Like that's a big sticking point for magic right now, is you gotta get used to losing because like even the back stacks are like what, 70% win rate? Like there's that 30% that's gonna happen. And sometimes that 30% is gonna happen a couple times in the row. But there was another thing I wanted to talk about because of Ben Shapiro, and that is the realization of terrible people have followings. It will hurt you on the inside every time you think about it, but the truth of the matter is you need to understand that so it stops hurting you. Because I've just come to that realization and it's not bugging me anymore because every crappy opinion has a million people behind it. 
Every good opinion has a million people behind it. Everything has a million people behind it. There are way too many white supremacists, unfortunately, but they exist. And I wish they didn't, but they do. And I can either stress for the whole, my entire life about the fact they exist, or I can just accept that they exist, and hopefully in some way help that that doesn't be a big problem. Or whatever thing. Anti-LGBT, white supremacy, just all these different things I'm against. They're very popular with certain groups, and I can only hope that whatever ways I contribute in whatever ways in life, it helps bring that down. Because the fact of the matter is, they're, everything's popular. Everything in some way, there's some really crappy person you don't like that's popular, and you can't believe they're popular, but they are, because there's, there are other crappy people. And there's some really great people, really good people that you just don't like, because you just don't like them, and they're really popular, and you don't like that fact. That's, that's just how it is. Ben Shapiro, I think, is an awful person, and he's very popular. And that's how it is, because let's not forget, the Nazis happened. <laughs> Millions and millions of people who were okay with genocide happened. Hitler had a bajillion people behind him. I'm going to say bajillion because it's a funny number. There are terrible people who have a ton of backing. They have a ton of fans. Mein Kampf happens. He got a ton of viewership. Like, this is a thing that happens. I remember reading that book. I read it in high school because I wanted to understand why something like this could happen. And I still, I don't even remember that book anymore at this point, but I still, like, I remember reading, I'm like, how the hell did this work out? How did this work? Because it's just, I just feel like there's a lot of hatefulness to this. And that's the truth of it is, there's just hateful people out there, and they have a hateful following. That's what it is. Because there are people who just run on hate. And that was, to a lesser degree, that was an existence we could have had. We could have been a very good hateful channel, because... I can do angry pretty well, but that is not the fuel I wanted. Pe Some people really enjoy that and even miss when I got really angry at things. And that was a that was a path we kind of gone, but I didn't want to go that way because what kind of fun is that on the inside to be that? Um, like I'm, I'm tired of angry Joe right now. Jesus, uh, he's only worth watching for the game reviews. I feel like I just his TV and movie stuff is just awful. He's just not got great takes, unfortunately. But that is the truth of the matter is there are people you can't believe have followings. And that's just a thing. Because everything's got a following. Everything's got a following. I Like, we can touch on last week where I'm like, the Transformers movies, I think, are just terrible, but it's got a following. This is this is the, this is why I didn't like this, this is the part I, I wasn't touching last week where I'm like, there's more serious things like white supremacy and Nazis, and and anti-LGBT, anti and anti-just things, and on that scale, I and like active anti-vaxxers, like, on that scale, I feel like there's definitely a harder line of that's not okay, as compared to pop culture. When it comes to pop culture, it's okay for people to like whatever the hell they like, but when we're talking more of the hard things, like being okay with genocide, or just flat-out racism, or holding people back, or just hatred of men, hatred of women, hatred of whatever. That is a harder line. That is a line that I don't think is okay to cross, and yet it happens. Many people are in these lines, and it's just blah. And what really is, is just me shining a light on that. And just thinking about it. That's really what it is. And the thing I don't want is despair over that. Because... That is something that I definitely use as a source of depression back in the day was just the whole, like, these terrible people are popular. And that's awful. And that just made me sadder. Th but it's a truth of life. And because it's a truth of life, this is what, how I use it to not be a depression uh, source. It is like, it's just part of life. And because it's just part of life, it's not depressing. Though depressing things are part of life as well. Just... The existence that some people will eke out in their lives. They're not going to have the greatest lives. They're going to have really sad lives. And you can use that as depression fuel, or you just accept it. And it's just a thing. And you hope you're not one of them. That is the depressing line I'm going down. Let's stop going down that line, because that can go real bad real fast. Or you can appreciate it, I suppose. Where you can feel that you are, well, you're blessed in some ways. Now, this is a whataboutism that I don't like doing. That is the whole whataboutism of... 
And what about this? Like, how come, why are you so depressed when there's worse things over here? That's never helpful to a depressed person. It doesn't help them whatsoever. So I don't want it to be about that. I painted myself into a corner here. What am I doing with my hands here? <laughs> Aliens. Um, I don't measure my age that often. 32 years of experience. Say maybe 12, 13 years of, of depression experience. This is where I've come from there. This is where I'm at from there. Where I remember using everything as depression fuel. Every sad thing, every sad concept, whatever, as depression fuel. And sometimes that's, those can still make me sad at instances. And I use acceptance of life as a way to get past them. The acceptance that my life is what it is. It's crappy in a lot of ways, and it's great in a lot of ways. And there's going to be people who just have way better lives. They never have an awful point. And there's going to be people with just such sad, awful lives. And that's just... That just sucks. And that's But that's just what it is. Because some things are just chance. A lot of things are just chance. And feel blessed for the good parts and just wish better for the bad parts. And at some point in the center, I wish things were better for people in general. But we all just... Everything's built on something else, whether we recognize it or not. Obviously, our food just comes from the suffering of different things. You come from uh, suffering of animals, suffering of this. Like, our phones... Or um, things in general are cheap as they are because of like sweatshops or just hard labor and things like that. And then eating food, you just you gotta kill animals, you gotta kill plants. There's things have to die, things have to suffer, things have to hurt. Things just happen in that way. I wish we could just utopia nano machine sun everything. I really do. But that's the other part of it is accepting something does not mean you can live you should just limit yourself by it. I accept that so many awful things and so many good things were these different groups and everything, but with the hope and belief that we could still make things better for the livelihoods of people in general going forward. It's the whole nanomachine sound like. Why can't we... And maybe it has to do with distribution of wealth and all that stuff, but we'll, we're not going to go that deep. We've already gone long on that. But it's just, why can't we just have better living in general for more people? Oh, like, honestly, just one thing real quick is just homelessness shouldn't be a thing in North America. Like, the wealth we have, that just should not be a concept. And yet it is. And that's probably one of the great moral failings of the U.S. is having homeless people. We got a lot of money, and yet we're not, we're not able to deal with that. It was interesting as someone said, billionaires are the modern dragons. Like, hmm. It's kind of very true. Like, they're just sitting on a pile of gold. They're sleeping on the piles, piles of money there. And they wield great power. So it's not a bad discomparison saying that billionaires are the modern dragons. And we just steer clear of them. We can complain about them or whatever, but they got all the power and money they got. And they can do whatever they want. And all we can do is just be bystanders of that. Very unfortunate. That's the vlog. <laughs> oh god, we want long Jinx to kill me. Jinx is always gonna kill me. The nice thing with the with the becoming a full certified operator though is I will get a pay raise, like I said, so we can do giveaways. It also means I need to pay Jinx some money. <laughs> Jinx should be paid in more than just thanks. Like I've said many times in, over the years with the vlog is we want full-time. The goal is for Jinx to be full-time first, and then me. That's always been the goal. Jinx has been hard at work at this channel for as long as I have, obviously. And they probably do even more than I do. But that's the vlog, so there you go. Um, happy Mother's Day. Uh, it's Mexican Mother's Day. Happy Mexican Mother's Day. I don't remember when American Mother's Day is right now. I don't have a mom, so I've totally checked out on that for like the last 20 years. But that right there is the vlog. I have fun talking about it, watching and listening. And this is what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks, goodbye, and see you next time.